Hello students, Sunaina here. How have you been? Have you been working hard and studying? We are back to learning geography today. We shall be learning the third chapter in geography, Indian climate. I am hoping you have practiced all the question answers, subjective and objective from the first two chapters of India location and its extent and physiography of India. If you still have any doubts in chapter 1 and 2, you can write to me. Alright students, let's begin chapter 3 of geography on page number 100. It's called Indian climate. What are we going to learn in this chapter? There are just three things you're going to learn in this chapter. The climate type of India. So the climate type of India has a very special name. We will learn about that. We will learn about factors affecting it. Then we will learn what are the various climatic seasons and we will also learn what are their characteristics. Lastly, we will learn distribution of rainfall in India. Let's begin. Students, what is the type of climate India has? It has tropical monsoon type of climate. A very important question almost asked every year for one mark. Name the type of climate in India. Tropical monsoon. It can also be asked as a give reason. Why tropical monsoon? Let's look at it now. This is because a greater part of India, a greater part of India lies in the tropical zone. Tropical zone means the zone between the equator and the tropic of Cancer. Okay, a greater part of India lies there called the tropical region. The above part is called temperate region. But because a greater part lies in the tropical zone, its climate is greatly influenced by monsoon winds. From give reason point of view, very important. Now, what are the four main factors that affect the climate of India? Let's look. It is location. Here, location, underline it. Water bodies, relief features and monsoon winds. How does location impact the climate? If you are closer to the equator, you receive direct sunlight of the sun. If you are closer to the pole, the sun's rays become slanting or oblique which affect the climate of the region. Next, water bodies. The closer a location is to the sea, river or any such water body, its climate is affected accordingly. Relief features. What is the meaning of relief features? It could be mountain, valley, hills, etc. Lastly, monsoon winds. The winds that bring rainfall to India. I am going to give you all a quick key to remember these four factors of location, water bodies, relief and monsoon winds. Life with red mud. L W R M. L for location. W for water bodies. R for relief features. M for monsoon winds. You can use this technique for all your subjects to remember your answers in a very easy way for your examination. Let's continue. Climate seasons. There are four climate seasons. A very important question from exam point of view. The first one, the winter season from December to February. If you are asking me, ma'am, should we know the months also? Yes, definitely you should know the months as well. Second one, the summer season from March to May. Third, the rainy season from June to mid-September. Last, any guesses? Yes, you're right. 
it is the retreating monsoon season from mid September to November. Now we will learn every single season in detail along with their characteristics. Students, let's learn about the winter season. Whenever you learn about any season, you should first understand the position of the sun. So in winter season, the sun, the sun's rays are in which hemisphere? What do we mean by hemisphere? The equator divides the earth, the entire earth into two equal halves. The upper part is northern hemisphere, the lower part is southern hemisphere. Do you all know which hemisphere is India in? Hmm? I hear someone saying north. Correct, India is in the northern hemisphere. So in winter season, the sun's rays are vertically, that is directly on top of which hemisphere? The southern hemisphere. So India which is in the northern hemisphere gets slant or oblique rays. Okay, after you understand in which hemisphere the sun is and whether the rays are vertical or oblique, we will learn about the temperature and the humidity. The temperature and humidity are both low. So there is going to be clear sky. It is cool in the north and warm in the south. And which is the coldest month? January is the coldest month. The hilly areas of Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh record the lowest temperature. Is there any one location in particular? Yes, the Dras near Kargil has recorded the lowest temperature. What was the temperature? Minus 40 degrees Celsius. What is common? Dew is common, fog is common. There is heavy snowfall in the mountain areas. What percentage of annual rainfall does India get during the season? Just 2%. So what all we learnt? The sun's rays are vertically over southern hemisphere. So the northern hemisphere gets oblique rays. The temperature and the rainfall are low. So the sky is clear. January is the coldest month. Dras near Kargil has recorded the lowest temperature. And dew and fog is very common. Only 2% of rainfall comes in the season. All of these points you have to learn from exam point of view. Next, the summer season. First, where is the sun? Now the sun has come to the northern hemisphere. So the vertical rays of the sun are falling directly on India. The temperature is very high. It is hot dry and sultry. The highest recorded temperature here is 49.4 degrees Celsius where at Ganganagar in Rajasthan. Where was the coldest? Dras in Kargil. Highest at Ganganagar in Rajasthan. Again from exam point of view very important. Convectional rain occurs locally in some parts of the country. What is the meaning of convectional current? Let us discuss. Because of very high temperature, the air closer to the ground heats up. Anything that heats up rises and whatever is cold sinks. Why? Because of density. Now when the hot air rises and cold air sinks, it gets condensed when it goes up and comes down as rain. Is this rainfall in summer important? Yes, it's very, very important. It is also known as Andhi in Uttar Pradesh. Kala Baisakhi in West Bengal. Mango showers in Kerala. Why is it called mango showers is also a very important give reason. It helps the mango crop and coffee blossom in Karnataka and it's very beneficial to the coffee crop. India receives only 10% of its annual rainfall during summer. 2% during winter, 10% during summer. All of these names are very important. Most important being 
mango showers. Okay. 